hey guys i hope that i'm live right now if you guys are able to see me properly as well as there's no issues with the audio or the video please do let me know hey guys i hope that i am live right now if you guys are able to listen to me properly as well as there's no issues with the audio or the video please do let me know guys i'm so sorry for being late actually the previous class went on for a very long period of time itself okay uh are you guys able to listen to me properly please do let me know are you guys able to listen to me properly please do let me know guys yeah please send the message to all the whatsapp groups that the uh, data visualization bootcamp has already started thanks so much uh, i'm so sorry guys uh, that that uh, bootcamp extended for a very long period of time itself uh, are you guys able to listen to me properly everything is good great amazing amazing excited for today's class okay so we'll be continuing from where we had left for python i'm extremely so so sorry for being late from tomorrow it won't happen okay it won't happen again i'm saying i'm extremely sorry for being late that class went on for a very long period of time okay so we will start off with our today's class uh, immediately we won't be waiting anymore and we'll start off with python guys can somebody remind me what we have learned yesterday guys just a quick revision what we have learned yesterday please let me know guys Please let me know guys what we have learned yesterday guys please do let me know Guys let me know what are the different things that we have learned yesterday guys please do let me know Let's switch on the modes at least up till a part of time okay we learned about data types okay we learned about variables we learned about the print statement great amazing amazing uh, so that is what we have learned okay and int and float we started out with int and float if you guys remember we started out with int and float as well okay so let's continue from right over there guys let me open up google collab so it will take up a second to open up google collab so that will also take up some time okay uh, give it a second guys it will just run slowly and steadily again the classes will be of one and a half hours guys okay the classes will be of one and a half hours so please be patient with me please be in the class try to understand as much as you can okay if you have any doubts any queries put it up in the live chat i will try my best to be able to help you guys out as well okay and not spam the live uh, live chat guys because then i will not be i will not be able to see your questions and it's very important that i'm able to see your questions and i'm able to answer them properly as well so somebody is asking i am attending the course but couldn't complete yesterday's attendance what to do right now or get my certificates please help i am also attending the live lectures ankit chakraborty uh, do one thing yesterday's attendance link is still open yesterday's attendance link i have kept it open because it's day one i am able to understand that many of the students are not able to fill it up so you go back right over there fill up the attendance link for that day and you can continue from right over there so mesh like i've already said i've already uploaded the video it is taking some time to process because it's a very 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 long video okay so that's why it will take some time it will be uploaded by tonight so please do not spam the chat okay okay so let's get started guys right away okay so right over here we have finished up with func print functions we have finished up with multiple assignment operators this is also something that we did yesterday okay we have finished up with variable naming conventions uh we went further learning about overwriting the variable as well okay we also learned about let's say uh integers and floats right over here so we started learning about integers and floats and this is the topic that we are at of this particular point of time this is a very important point that you need to understand about floats guys a very 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 important point that you need to know about floats now this particular point this is not something that you will learn in any course any course that you are learning through or anything else any place that you go nobody will be teaching you this particular point this is a point that you can only learn about by doing two things first by reading books on python proper thick ass books that you have to read at the end of the day okay all the second way that you can learn is by really going into a lot of depth into python and trying to like take up a screwdriver and do everything yourself in python only then you will be able to learn this point but this is something that because it is not known to many people because it is not known to many people in interviews in job interviews and in interview interviews 
this particular question is asked to many students when they are writing python in their resumes they're writing python in their resumes then this particular question will be asked to you guys definitely ask you guys so please listen to this very 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 carefully if you're missing on this particular point if you're not able to understand this particular point you are at a huge 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 loss at the end of the day so just to make sure that people are not spamming the live chat see those who are spamming the live chat i don't even care about them because like i said those people we are noting down their names we are not going to give them the certificates then they will be telling that sir i was live I was there for the 70s. I even have filled up the attendance form. Why didn't you get the certificate? Because you are spamming the live chat. Okay, so let's get started right away. The attendance link will be shared to you at the end of today's class. Not right now, at the end of today's class. So please focus upon what I'm teaching because this is a very, very, very interesting as well as a very important point as well. Okay, so another point that you guys need to keep in mind is that float are in approximation to the number they represent. You need to remember now the this exact line should be engraved in your brains. Okay, this exact line should be engraved in your brains. Float is an approximation to the number they represent. But what do I mean by that? Okay, what do I mean by that? Let's try to understand that. Let me just erase this so everything from right away here. Okay. So you are having floats. Okay, you are having floats at any point of time. Now floats you are writing it something as let's say 22.6 okay you are writing 2.6 now in the memory inside of python it is not getting saved as 2.6 exactly it is getting saved as a little bit more than 2.6 that is something like 2.6 something like that is getting saved in python's memory as a little bit greater than 0.6 okay and that is what this is floats are an approximation to the number they represent now why is that done by python why is this done by python why are floats not saved exactly at 2.6 but a little bit more than that why is that the case this is to make sure that you are able to maintain the precision of the number itself this is done to make sure that you are able to maintain this number of decimal points after the number. For example, you are dividing this by some other number. So how many precisions you need to maintain right over there? How many decimal points that you need to maintain right over there? To be able to maintain that many number of decimal points inside the memory, that is called as a precision. In technical terms, this is called as precision of that number. For that, they are storing it as a little bit greater than uh, 2.6 now how are we able to prove this okay we need to prove this i cannot just say this to you and just like, like think that yes uh, i've just said it it's like my word is like bible you have to consider that i'm like lord krishna this is gita this is not the case okay whatever i've said right over here i need to prove it as well so let's go to back to our code let's go back to our code right over here what i'm trying to do is i'm adding 0 0.23 30 times i'm adding 0 0.23 30 times now what is 0 0.23 added 30 times guys can somebody let me know what is 0 0.23 added 30 times can somebody let me know guys what is 0 0.23 added 30 times can somebody let me know Can somebody let me know what is 0 0.23 into 30? 0 0.23 into 30. Guys, uh, do you even want to study or not? Like you are writing present, sir. Like I said again and again, everybody who is writing present, sir, they are not going to get the certificates. They are not going to get the certificates. They are not even going to get the attendance link as well. You fill up the attendance link, you will not even get the certificates. So don't, don't do that. What if you want to interact with me, whatever I'm asking, answer that question properly. Okay, so 0 0.23 30 times is 6.9. So I'm adding 0 0.23 30 times on the left hand side and having 6.9 on the right hand side. Now this is the equality operator. This is checking whether the left hand side is equal to the right hand side or not. Whether the left hand side is equal to the right hand side or not. If it is equal, it will give you true as the answer. If it is not equal, it will give you false as the answer. Now 0 0.23 added 
30 times should be equal to 6.9 but when i'm running this particular line of code when i'm running this particular line of code i'm getting false as my answer i'm getting false as my answer that is 0 0.23 added 30 times is not equal to 6.9 if i'm printing the answer out if i'm printing the answer out as you are able to see it is 0 0.6.9 as you are able to see the precision, you are able to maintain the precision. What is happening right over here is if you're just doing so, if I'm just writing 0 0.23 plus 0 0.23, I'm just doing 0 0.23 plus 0 0.23. The answer is exactly 0 0.46 because the precision is so small. So what is happening right over here is you're having 0 0.26. Okay, you're having 0 0.26 plus 0 0.26. Okay, 0 0.26 right over here. When you're adding both of them. Okay, when you're adding both of them, the decimal points is so small. This decimal value is so small that after adding it, Python ignores it. Okay, so that would be equal to 5.2000000000246. Now this is very small, so Python just ignores it. Okay, Python just ignores it and gives you the answer as 5.2. But when you're adding this particular number again and again and again 30 times, this decimal point becomes big. This decimal point becomes big and you're not able to ignore it. You will not be able to ignore it at the end of the day. And when you're not able to ignore it, this is what happens. So if you're adding just two times, you're getting 0 0.46. But if you're adding it 30 times, that decimal point, that decimal point that you're having, that becomes, okay, that is not something that you can uh, ignore. That is not something that you can ignore. So if I'm running this particular line of code, as you're able to see, we are getting 6.9000000006. Okay, I'll tell you guys again about precision. Okay, precision is basically able to maintain these many number of decimal points to be able to maintain. So if you are dividing uh, 0 0.23 divided by 56, okay, to be able to maintain that many number of decimal points to be able to give you that many number of decimal points. That is the role of precision. Okay, and that is why it saves it a little bit greater than 0 0.23 so that it is so that it is able to maintain that precision itself so that it is able to maintain that precision itself okay are you guys able to understand this we are having 0 0.23 it is being saved as 0 0.23 0, 0, 0, 0. there's a lot of zeros guys there's a lot of zeros one two three we're adding it one or two times it is very small this entire thing is very small so it can be ignored so you get the answer so 0 0.23 plus 0 0.23 you get the answer as 0 0.46 but adding it 30 times makes this a little bit bigger it makes this a little bit bigger python is not able to ignore it and that is where you get an answer like 0 0.6.9 0 there's a greater than 6.9 itself are you guys able to understand this and that is why floats are called as an approximation to the number they represent floats are called floats are called as an approximation to the number they represent okay so this is a question that will be asked to you in your interviews this is a question that will be asked to you in your interviews that okay if i'm doing 0 0.23 plus this is this, this 30 times okay will it be equal to 6.9 will it be equal to 6.9 Okay, so you will tell no you you are you attended this boot camp so you know the answer you will tell that no 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 this is not happening okay it is a little bit greater than 6.9 it will give the answer as false okay that is a question that you will be answering because floats are an approximation to the number they represent but what if, if i am doing 0 0.23 multiplied by 30 if I'm doing 0 0.23 multiplied by 30 if i'm not adding it up i'm multiplying it will it be equal to 6.9 guys Okay, will it be equal to 6.9? Please let me know. Think about it. Think about it. Will it be equal to 6.9, guys? Instead of adding 0 0.23 30 times, I'm multiplying 0 0.23 directly by 30. Okay, will it give me exactly 6.9 or not? Or will it also be greater than 6.9? Please let me know. Please let me know. What do you guys think, guys? What do you guys think? The answer is that if you're multiplying 0 0.23 by 30, it will give you the exact answer 6.9. It will give you the exact answer as 6.9. We need to understand that as well. Because this is also a tricky question that comes up into the interview. So adding this up, if I'm multi I'm so sorry, if I'm multiplying it by 30 and then checking whether it is equal to 6.9, this will give me an answer as true. 
this will give me an answer as true if i'm running this particular line of code as you're able to see it will give me the exact answer as 6.9 itself it will give me the exact answer as 6.9 why is that the case now just think about it okay just think about it right over here i'm having 0 0.23 added 30 times i'm checking the equality to 0 0.23 multiplied by 30 thinking logically if you're thinking according to mathematics both of them should be equal multiplication is repeated addition both of them should be equal but there's a huge difference between this this is where python opti like brings in an optimization okay python brings it an optimization right over here when you're adding this 30 times what is what are you actually adding what is the entire process of this addition just think about it what you're doing is you're adding first of all 0 0.23 plus 0 0.23 that will be equal to 0 0.43 okay then you're adding 0 0.43 to 0 0.23 Python does not know that all these numbers are the same. Python does not know that you are again and again adding 0 0.23 itself. Python is creating a new number, then looking at, okay, so these are the two numbers that I have to add. These are both different. And then I'm adding it. So 0 0.69, 0 0.69 is becoming right over here. So right over here, Python is not able to understand that you are adding the same number again and again. So it is again and again adding the decimal points. It is adding the precision as well. It's adding the precision again and again as well. But right over here, Python is able to see that you are having a multiplication. Python knows that right over here, okay, you are doing a multiplication you are multiplying the number itself by 30 so instead of doing repeated addition it knows that you are using 0 0.23 30 times it is able to do an optimization it is able to directly write 6.9 and remove everything after that after the decimal point remove everything that is an optimization that the python is able to do because from this python is able to understand that you have to 0 0.23 30 times is able to understand from right over there but looking at this addition the process of this addition python is not able to understand that so this gives you an exact 0, 6.9 because Python is able to do an uh, optimization right over there. Whereas right over here, it is not able to do that optimization for you. Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know guys. Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know guys. Guys, are you able to understand this? This is very important guys. Please do let me know. Guys, are you able to understand this? Please let me know because this is very important, guys. Just think about it. Here, you are if you are just putting up a blindsided after every single attendance, after every single attendance, you are blindsiding yourself. You don't know what is that you are adding again and again. So you will be adding the decimal points as well. Whereas with the multiplication, you immediately get to know that I have to add the same number. I have to multiply this by 30. So you are able to do an optimization right over there. Okay? great so at the end of the day you just need to remember that floats are an approximation to a, the number they represent and it is a little bit greater than that number itself okay this is the only thing that you need to remember floats are an approximation to the number they represent and it is a little bit greater than that number the rest of the stuff was just the proof that i gave it to you guys okay that's it nothing else you just need, need to remember this line the next data type that we are going to see is the boolean data type okay so bool or boolean is another data type that is commonly used in python and this is something that you have already learned in physics this is something that you have already learned in physics in your 11th standard so it will be very easy for you guys to understand this bool or boolean for short form can have a value of either true or false or can have a value of one or zero we have already learned about this in your physics class ones and zeros guys and or not gates okay that is the boolean algebra the boolean algebra is basically your and or not gates okay and you do that using the truth and the false values so in your physics you learned about ones and zeros so one is basically true and zero is basically false all the electronic devices all the uh, analog devices whether it be your computer code or whether it be the devices you have already learned in physics they're all based on ones and zeros itself so it, this boolean data basically fundamentally exists everywhere that you are able to see every electronic device okay so right over here you can create a boolean value as you are having a variable name and the value you can assign is as true or false okay now t should be capital in true and f should be capital in false okay 
you can compare two particular values to produce a boolean result for example this is called as comparison operators greater than okay greater than equal to less than less than equal to okay is equal to whether the left hand side is equal to the right hand side or not is not equal to whether the left hand side is not equal to the right hand side or not for example if i'm having is three less than equal to is less less than one guys is three what will be the answer of this is three less than one or not tell me what will be the answer of this particular statement is three less than one or not please let me know guys Please let me know guys, is 3 less than 1 or not? Please let me know. Yes, 3 is less than 1. And when it is less than 1, that, sorry, 3 is greater than 1. So, 3 is not less than 1. So, this will be false. Okay, this value would be false right over here. You are comparing them. Okay, you are comparing them. So, the value saved inside of A variable will be false. So, I am running this particular line of code as you are able to see. We are getting false printed on our screen is 3 equal to 1 is the value 3 equal to 1 or not we are checking whether the left hand side is equal to the right hand side or not we are doing that we know 3 is not equal to 1 so this will again print out false for us we are checking 3 is not equal to 1 okay for not equal to whether the left hand side is not equal to the right hand side you use not and then equal to so that is yes 3 is not equal to 1 of course so we'll getting true as our answer we'll getting true as our answer so as simple as that these are called as comparison operators okay the next particular operators are the logical operators so i won't be going deep into the logical operators i hope that you guys remember from your physics classes that is your and gate your or gate your not gate okay all these different gates do you remember that from your physics classes guys please do let me know do you remember those like logic gates from your physics classes guys please do let me know Do you remember the logic gates from your 11th classes in your physics and or and not gates and or and not gates guys do you remember that great so again i'm assuming that you have completed your 12th standard so you should be remembering that okay so if one and one then it's true and all those kind of stuff right over here let's take up an example how we can use that to can like to do boolean algebra Right over here, you are having rent is equal to 1200. Okay, right over here, you are having 1200 as your rent. Is rent greater than 1000, guys? Is rent greater than 1000? Yes, rent is 1200. So, first of all, replace rent by 1200. So, replace rent by 1200. Is 1200 greater than 1000? Yes, 1200 is greater than 1000. So, this is true right over here. Is 1200 less than 2000? Yes, it is less than 2000. So, it is true right over here as well. If both the sides are true on and, if it's 1 and 1, if both the sides are true on both the sides it's one and one then the answer would be one itself okay the answer would be one itself so the answer would be one so this will be replaced by true again so is affordable should be true okay is affordable should be true right over here so i'm going back to my code we are having rent is greater than 1000 and rent is less than 2000 if i'm running this particular line of code we should be getting true as our output so and we are getting true as our output as well similarly right over here again the statement is same we know that this entire thing is true we know that this entire thing is true so let's remove this let's replace it by true so what is not true what is not true not true is false okay not true is false so this will be replaced by false right over here and the answer should be false okay the answer should be false so if we are going back to our code we are not true if i'm running this particular line of code you should be getting false as your output now there is a particular line of code right over here this particular like stuff right over here that we have written okay this is called as a comment okay this is called so you need to understand about comments as well whenever you are typing a particular code print uh, hello 
मे बी यू डोंट वॉन्ट टू राइट ओके यू डोंट वॉन्ट टू राइट समथिंग लाइक यू डोंट वॉन्ट टू राइट अ कोड बट यू वॉन्ट टू टेल योर सेल्फ इन द फ्यूचर वेन यू आर रेफरिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर कोड यू टू टेल योर सेल्फ वॉट यू हैव डन इन दट पर्टिकुलर लाइन ऑफ कोड यू टू राइट अ कमेंट फॉर दैट पर्टिकुलर लाइन ऑफ कोड इट सेल्फ दीज कमेंट्स आर नॉट पीसेज ऑफ कोड द पीस ऑफ इंग्लिश comments are not pieces of code these are pieces of english that you are writing for your own reference it's like notes it's like notes for you guys so you guys just have to write hash and whatever you want to write you can write it after that okay that is a note that is a comment that you are putting up right over there okay so now this does not get executed because this is not a code this is normal english it's not code this is normal english only print hello world will get executed the rest won't get executed because that is a comment this is how you are able to put up a comment in your python okay this is how you are having a comment in your python now if i'm removing this from right over here going down below okay if i'm having multiple lines of code okay if i have multiple lines right over here if i want to create if i want to create uh like i want to comment everything out okay i want to comment everything all these 1 2 3 4 5 i want to comment all the five lines of code so i will be selecting all the five lines of code and i will be commenting it by pressing control and then forward slash okay i'll be commenting it by pressing control and then forward slash okay control and then forward slash that will comment it out again i want to decomment it okay i want to decomment it right over here so we'll again select all the lines of code and then click on again comment control forward slash okay i will again click on control forward slash right over here so that will decomment it for me okay that is how you can use comments inside of your code okay that is how you can use comments inside of your code are you guys able to understand this please let me know are you guys able to understand this please let me know guys are you guys able to understand this please let me know so uh, i need to so how many of you are familiar with the uh, amber heard and <laughs> johnny depp trial that was currently going on okay uh, the uh, johnny depp and uh, amber heard uh, trial that was going on how many of you guys are familiar with that can somebody let me know i think so most of you would be familiar like it was one of the like biggest uh, like law and everything that was there right over there so we created a meme on that and i would really like to show you guys that i was i was laughing so hard on it okay so we created this meme okay right over here <laughs> this is something that uh, like It's amazing. Like our team created this. My dog step on a bee. Defton will teach you PHP. <laughs> step on a bootcamp for free. <laughs> okay. So this is amazing. So guys, if you really want to follow us, do follow us on Instagram as well. The link is down in the description of the video. Okay. We try to post some memes. We try to post some informative content as well right over there so that you guys are always like uh, ready to move out with the same. so uh, every single day there is something that we will be putting up that you guys are able to understand and increase your knowledge as well as have some fun as well at the end of the day okay but th this was best man like i really loved it okay so let's move further with the class so let's have some masti in the class as well so that we are not getting bored and we are enthusiastic about the class because the class is like a bit i want to understand it's a bit lengthy class so we need to make sure that you guys are also able to understand okay Okay, so let's get started, guys. Uh, strings. Python has another data type in its toolkit called as strings. Okay, so we have learned about lists. Sorry, <laughs> we learned about integers. We have uh, learned about uh, floats. We have learned about boolean. Okay, the next particular uh, data type that we are going to learn is strings. Okay, so strings, as the name suggests, deals with characters, words, and text. Why does it call as a string? Because it's a string of characters. Okay, just like you're having a string and then like a 
thread and then you're having pearls inside of it similarly strings are basically like string of characters that is why it is called as strings in uh, that is the data type that we are going to study right now now string is an immutable order of sequence of characters okay string is an immutable ordered sequence of characters now we'll be learning out what is immutable what is ordered after a little while because right now if i'm trying to make you guys understand you won't be able to understand it so please be patient we will be understanding what is immutable what is ordered but please remember it up till that point of time okay just remember it that python is an immutable ordered sequence of characters just try to remember this okay but when we'll be moving further i will be making you guys understanding and understand it as well okay don't worry about it so right over here you can create a string using double quotes as well as single quotes okay you can create a string using double quotes and single quotes if i'm running this particular line of code you're able to see that we are able to create the, the same string using double quotes as well as single quotes that is how you are able to create a string okay now you can assign a string to a variable as well okay you can assign a string to a variable as well now a string can contain spaces a string can contain small letters a string can contain capital letters as well a string can contain numbers a string can contain special characters okay, a string can contain anything so it is a sequence or a collection of characters guys it is a sequence of characters it is a sequence of characters guys okay so as you're able to see you can create a string and a string can contain anything inside of it okay now we're checking up the type so we have already learned about the type function itself we have already created a type function itself okay so right over here we are having the type as moto we are having the type as moto so what is the type of moto so it will give you the type of moto as str or strings str is the short form for strings itself okay so right over here, this is one problem with strings. You are when you are creating a string, you are you want to start off with a double quotation mark, okay, and you want to end at a double quotation mark itself. Now you are not able to create a string with a quotation mark in between. You cannot include a quotation mark in between. How to deal with that? Why is this error happening? So if I am running this particular line of code, you are able to see that we are getting an error. Why is this error happening, guys? So whenever you are creating a string, what is happening is Python starts reading the string from the start. Okay, Python starts reading the string from the start. You are having the first particular item as the double quotation mark. Now Python wants to find another double quotation mark to end this string. Okay, Python wants to find another double quotation mark to end this string. So Python will move further from right over here. Okay, Python will move further from right over here. It will scan all these text. It will scan all this text. It will reach out to another double quotation mark. Once it has reached out to another double quotation mark, it is like, okay, the entire string was up till here itself. This is where the string is ending. I have found the next double quotation mark. This is where the string is ending. Okay. And whatever you have written after that, that is gibberish. This is gibberish. I'm not able to understand anything right over here. What the fuck has you written right over here? I'm not able to understand anything. And then you are having another double quotation mark. Python is like, okay, you're starting another string. Okay, so this is an empty string. You're having does two double quotation mark. This is an empty string. And hence you're getting the error. Now to deal with this problem of having quotes inside of quotes, Python has provided you with two easy ways to do that. Okay, Python has provided you with two easy ways to do that. For example, in your string, you need to use double quotation marks. Okay, in your string, you need to use double quotation marks right over here. In that particular case, you start off the string with a single quotation mark. You start, if you want to use a double quotation mark inside your string, you start off the string with a single quotation mark. Now Python is finding, uh, trying to find another single quotation mark to end the screen, end the string. So it is moving further, it is moving further, moving further, it is finding a double quotation mark. Again, it wants a single quotation mark to end the string. It will again move further, move further, move further, move further. Again, it is finding a double quotation mark. Again, it needs to find a single quotation mark to end the string. And it is moving up till the very end, finding the single quotation mark and ending the string right over here. And as you are able to see, there will be no errors right over here. But what if, if you want to use both single quotation marks as well as double quotation marks, both of them inside the string. Okay, if you want to use both of them inside the string, what will you have to do? Okay, so right over there you are having the escape character. You are having the escape character. The escape character basically tells Python that whenever you are using escape character, it tells Python that whatever the next thing is, 
it does not have any special importance to you okay it tells python that okay i'm the escape character and here like here is somebody else sitting okay, i will just tell somebody from the police that dude like i know him you don't have to check him you can move further okay that is what basically is happening with the escape character right over here so you're starting out with a single quotation mark now python is trying to find another single quotation mark to end the string it finds a double quotation mark no it wants a single quotation mark it will move further from right over here right over here right over here okay then you are moving out to a back you are having a backslash okay this is called an escape character so escape character takes python into his arms and tells him that dude like i know this particular guy the next particular element the next particular character i know him personally you don't have to check him you can move further so python will just ignore the next particular character it will think that okay this now does not has any special significance to me it will move further move further move further again find a double quotation mark wants a single quotation mark and then it will end it up at the very end of the string itself now if you are running this particular line of code you are easily able to see that you are getting the single quotation mark in your string because the backslash is basically telling python that the next character has no special value it has no special importance to you and that is where you are using this backslash and this is called as your escape character this is called as your escape character are you guys able to understand this please let me know guys are you guys able to understand this please let me know guys are you guys able to understand this please let me know Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know, guys. Amazing, guys. You are so smart, man. Such an amazing class that I'm having. You guys were able to understand it in just one go. Amazing, man. Amazing. Okay. So the next thing that you need to understand is concatenation. Like it looks like I'm seeing a meme or something like the concatenation. <laughs> okay so concatenation is another property associated with strings where you are able to append or attach two strings together to create a single string okay where you are able to append or attach two strings together to create a single string okay so you are having two strings hello and world right over here you are having two strings right over here hello and world you can use the addition symbol okay addition operator this is called as a concatenation operation okay you are basically attaching both the strings together now if you want to have some gap in between the two words then you will be having the first particular string then you want to concatenate a gap and then you want to concatenate world so i'm running this particular line of code as you are able to see we are adding hello world printed on our screen and hello space world also printed on our screen Okay, we are getting hello world printed on our screen hello space world printed on our screen as well are you guys able to understand this please let me know guys are you guys able to understand this please let me know are you guys able to understand concatenation please let me know guys but guys we need to finish off with python anyhow today Okay, we need to finish off with python anyhow today so that we are able to finish off with uh, sorry we have to finish off with strings anyhow today so that from tomorrow onwards we can finish off with like lists and data uh, dictionaries in python like tuples and dictionary that is what we will be doing tomorrow and then we'll be starting off with our numpy pandas and uh, matplotlib and seaborn okay so that is our pro program for right now okay so how much is left right now let me just check a lot is remaining so we need to pace up our speed as well okay so another thing is you can use multiplication so you have used addition okay right now to basically concatenate or attach two strings together right now you want to use um multiplication on strings so what is multiplication guys multiplication is repeated addition if you are multiplying a string five times what you're basically trying to do is word plus word plus word plus word plus word 
this is what you are trying to write so it will basically append hello to each other five times and you will get this as your output we are having hello and then space at the end then this will append hello space five times for you guys and this is what you are having at the end of the day so multiplication is nothing else but addition so you are basically concatenating hello to each other five times you are basically concatenating hello to each other five times guys okay as you are able to see from right away here okay but you cannot do minus you cannot do subtraction okay, you cannot do like word minus so you cannot do hello minus uh, world okay this is not something that you can do i think so that will be the next example okay so you cannot divide two strings together that does not make any sense you cannot divide two strings together it will give you an error that unsupported type error unsupported operand types for division str and str that is you cannot divide a string to a string okay similarly you cannot have word minus word 2 okay word 1 minus word 2 you cannot subtract two strings together that does not make any sense okay if you are running this particular line of code again you will get a type error that you cannot use string and string for subtraction as well you cannot use string and string for subtraction as well okay so that is where you cannot use subtraction and division you can only use addition and multiplication on strings and you only use that for concatenation purposes itself okay you only use that for concatenation purpose itself okay now another useful built-in function in python is the len function we have learned about the type function we have learned about the print function one more useful built-in function is the len function or the length function that basically returns the number of characters in our string so if you are having dev uh, t o w n town right over here so d e v t o w n that is seven characters okay d e v t o w n that is seven characters right over here Okay, we are having seven characters right over here so you are finding the length of this particular string as seven we okay, are having the length of this particular string as seven okay if you are having a space in the middle what will be the answer guys if you are having a space in the middle if you are in dev space down what will be the length of it guys what will be the length of this particular statement can somebody let me know Can somebody let me know what will be the length of dev space down? Can somebody let me know that? So if you are having a space, so that is also calculated as one character, guys. We are having a space that is also calculated as one character. So the length will now be eight. This is dev space t o w n so you are having 8 as your answer you are having 8 as your answer right over here guys so length is again an inbuilt function in python okay now type and type conversion we have already seen type guys we have also seen some type conversion as well that we have seen so for example right over here we are checking out the type of 75 that would be an integer type of 75.0 that would be a float type of 75 that will be a string type of true that will be a bool so we are able to see the 75 as a value 75 as a value can be represented in three different data types Okay, it can be represented as that value in three different data types: it's int, float, as well as string. Okay, so that is where you are using type. You can convert one type to another as well. For example, we have already seen we can convert an integer to a float by writing float in front of it. Okay, if you are writing float in front of it, this is something that we have already seen yesterday. This is something that we have already seen yesterday. So we can convert an integer to a float, a float to an int as well. Now what we need to understand is how to convert a string to a float or, or an integer. Okay, that is what we need to understand. Okay, so right over here we are having marks. Marks is equals to 15. Okay, we are having marks is equals to 15 right over here. Okay, then you are having subject is equals to coding. We are having subject is equals to coding. Then semester is equals to first. So we are having these particular values right over here. Okay, you are having marks is equals to 15. Subject is equals to coding. Semester is equals to first. Now you need to create an entire string. You need to create an entire string right over here. You need to create a string that is I scored this much marks in this particular subject during my this particular semester okay this is what we want to create okay this is what we want to create right over here but how to do that 
Now, if you're directly trying to append, if you're directly trying to write right over here, it ice code and you're directly trying to concatenate marks. Now, marks is an integer. Ice code is a string. Okay. Marks is an integer. Ice code is a string. So, if I'm running this particular line of code, it is getting me an error that you can only concatenate string to a string. Not an integer to a string. You can only concatenate a string to a string, not an integer to a string. Okay. So for that, you need to convert this marks to a string. Marks is an integer right now. You need to convert this marks to a string. To be able to do that, again, it's extremely simple. Parenthesis. And after parenthesis, just write str okay just write str right over there if i'm running this particular line of code as you're able to see we're getting i scored 15 in coding during my first semester i'm getting i scored 15 in coding during my first semester right over here are you guys able to understand this please let me know we cannot concatenate a number with a string we cannot concatenate a number with a string okay we need to concatenate a string with a string itself. Are you guys able to understand? Please let me know guys. Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know guys. You can concatenate a string with a string. You cannot concatenate an integer to a string. You need to convert the integer to a string and then concatenate it. Okay. Great. <clears throat> Right over here, you are having uh, marks as 15. I can even con convert it. Okay, I can even convert it into uh, floats as well. So you're having a marks as 15 right over here. You want to check out the type of marks. So that will be an STR. Now I'm writing marks and I'm converting into a float. And then I'm printing marks. So I'm able to see that it was originally a string. I have converted into a float. That is 15.0. I have converted into a float. That is 15.0. All this we have learned yesterday, guys. Everything, all this that we are discussing right over here, we have already learned it yesterday in yesterday's class. If you paid attention right over there, you would be easily able to understand right over here as well. Okay, it will be very easy for you guys to understand it right over here as well. Okay, great. Now, one of the most important string functions is the format function. Okay, this is a very important function. So right now, you don't want to have something like this. You don't want to write an entirely big line like this at the end of the day. Okay, this entire line like I scored plus then converting marks to string plus then int plus subject plus duration during my... So this is a very big line of code. I don't want to write this entire concatenation again and again. So for that, we have another handy method in uh, strings that is the format method. So what happens right over here is I want to insert, I want to insert 27 in this particular string. Okay, I want to insert 27 in this particular string. So using concatenation, how I will be doing it? Print. Then I will just copy it from right over here. Okay, Muhammad has plus then it will be having like uh, int, no, sorry, str27 right over here. You to convert it into a string plus balloons. So this is the code that I will have to write to basically like make this particular line of code. Okay, Muhammad has then plus I will have to convert 27 to a string plus balloons. This is what I have to have to do. Now this entire thing is made easy for us using the format method. You can directly type your string. You can directly type your entire string wherever you want to insert your data. So for example, in the middle, you want to insert your data. You just have to put up a curly braces. In the middle, you have to put up a curly braces right over here. And then put dot format and the item that you want to insert in place of the curly braces. Okay. Again, like I said, each class is of one and a half hours, guys. So those who are thinking that, okay, the time is up. Congratulations. You have played yourself. Now you have to sit for 30 more minutes to finish the entire thing. Okay. So you are having this curly braces will then be uh, replaced by 27. Your curly braces will then be replaced by 27. And you don't even have to do any type of type conversion itself. It is able to automatically convert 27 to string and insert it in the string itself. You don't have to do string 27 again. You don't have to do it. You can just remove this. Instead of removing it, I will just comment it out. As you are able to see, you don't have to type convert it. Okay, it is directly, it will directly insert 27 in place of the curly braces. 
ओके इफ आई एम रनिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर लाइन ऑफ कोड एज एर एबल टू सी वे गेटिंग मोहम्मद हैज ट्वेंटी सेवन बलून्स आउट एज आर आउटपुट मोहम्मद हैज ट्वेंटी सेवन बलून्स आउट एज आर आउटपुट राइट ओवी शो ओके The next thing that we are having is example two. For example, we are having two strings that we want, two things that we want to insert into the string. We are having two things that we want to insert into the string itself. Does your dash dash? Just think about it as fill in the blanks. Just think about it as fill in the blanks. You are having dash and dash right over here. Then you are having dot format. And then you are having animal and action. So animal will be placed in the first fill in the blank, and action will be placed in the second fill in the blank. So you will be having the output as does your dog bite right over here? Does your dog bite right over here? Okay. So as you're able to see, we are having we can insert as many number of items inside our string itself. Think about it as a normal fill in the blanks question. You are having the question right over here. You are having the answer right over here. Think about it as a normal fill in the blank question itself. The third example right over here is you can use a variable instead of this string. You can use a variable instead of this string as well because what is a variable? It contains this particular string inside of it. So Maria loves dash and dash. And now you are having okay, you are having math and statistics at the end. You are having math and statistics at the end right over here. Okay, are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know, guys. Are you guys able to understand this? Please, are you able to see? These are not adjacent to each other. They are having and in the middle. You can have anything in the middle. If you are running this particular line of code, it will still work because you are like it is just like fill in the blanks, fill in the blanks, and inside a format you put up the answers. Okay, as simple as that. Okay, as simple as that as that. Okay, are you guys able to understand? Please let me know, guys. Amazing guys, amazing! You guys are so smart, man. You guys are so smart. Great. Okay. So, what is the time? We have a lot of time. Should we start off with lists, man? Like we will be able to finish it off uh, much more quickly. If you guys want, we can continue with lists as well. If you guys want, we can continue with lists as well, guys. Please let me know, guys. If you want, we can continue with lists as well. Please explain answer uh, example three, guys. Nothing else. This is a variable that I'm creating. Instead of using a string directly, I'm just writing it as a variable. Nothing else. Like variables, we have studied on the first day. Variables contain the value inside of it. Basically, it's like you're using a variable right over here. Nothing else. If you guys want, we can continue right now and study lists as well. Please let me know, guys. Do you tell like just write today or tomorrow? Like you want to continue right now? Do you want to continue tomorrow? Because see, today we only had like one hour of class. Was like six minutes late to the class itself. We haven't even officially covered one hour today. We haven't officially covered one hour today. And list is a very lengthy topic, guys. It will be better if you are able to start it today itself. Okay, so most of you are writing today, so of course we are going to start today. Okay, so list and membership operators. Up till now, you have learned about different data types that exist in Python. Now these data types think about it as like somebody is square, somebody is oval, somebody is a circle, somebody is a triangle. So there are the different data types that you have. Now you need a bucket to carry these data types to be able to maintain and carry these two data to be able to organize and carry these data types at any point of time. That is called as a data structure. You need a structure to be able to organize and carry these data types together okay that is where the concept of data structures come into place data structures are containers that organize and group data types together in different ways and list is one of the most common and one of the most basic data structures that are there in python okay list is one of the most common and the most basic data structure in python guys those who are telling tomorrow i have been lecturing for the past Three hours continuously without a break, without even going off for a like having a drink or something like that. So if I am able to do that, I think so. You guys will be able to easily do that. Okay. So 
please be motivated enough and let's get started with studying studying is extremely important guys okay so this is one of the most common and one of the most basic data structures in python it is an mutable ordered sequence of elements can somebody please remind me what was string this is mutable ordered sequence of elements what was string we will be discussing upon that don't worry about it but just to remind you guys what was string guys list is mutable ordered sequence of elements what was string please let me know guys please let me know guys what was string i told you guys to remember it please let me know guys immutable ordered sequence of elements okay immutable ordered sequence of elements okay so that was strings and list is mutable ordered sequence of elements okay list is mutable ordered sequence of elements we will be understanding this so don't worry about it we will be understanding it in a few minutes okay so don't worry about it but try to remember this okay the code below describes a way so we are so this is how you are able to create a list in python okay this is how you are able to create a list in python okay you are having the variable name of this particular list that is students it's plural please remember that and then you are having a particular list right over here it starts off with a rectangular brackets on both the sides and all the elements all the list item all the items that you want to it to con uh, contain inside of it you are putting it up right over here so this is a list of strings okay this is a list of strings right over here so having sam pam rocky austin steve banner inside of this particular list if i'm running this particular line of code it is creating a list for me it is creating a list for me right over here okay so lists are ordered let's try to understand what do you mean by order okay so let's go back to our drawing board i'm creating a list of uh, strings okay so i'm having the strings as students equals to sam pam rocky austin steve banner Okay, this is a particular list that i've created right over here just like you're having so think about this list as a particular road and you're having houses on top of it the first house the second house the third house the fourth house the fifth house the sixth house and this list is a particular society it is the gates of the society and you're having this particular houses on top of it okay now each of these houses you can uniquely identify by their address each house will have a number so it will be zero one two three four and five so these are the number of these houses okay as python is a zeroth index language that is it starts indexing from zero most of the languages are zeroth index languages itself okay so this particular letter this particular character in the string will be identified by the number zero this particular the index will be one then two then three then four then five if i want to get access to rocky if I want to get access to Rocky, then I have to just write students and then two, and that will give me Rocky as an answer. It will give me Rocky as an answer. So this is called as index. Think about it as the address of that particular element. It is called think of it as the address of that particular element itself. Okay. Okay, so right over here this is called as the address okay, this is called as the address right over here okay so right now let's go back to our code if i'm trying to access student zero okay if i'm trying to access student zero one and two it will give me the answer as sam pam and rocky it'll give me the answer as sam pam and rocky right over there so you're having sam as the as the zeroth index pam as the first index rocky as the second index and this is why it's just called as ordered because whatever the order that you are writing whatever order you are creating the entire list 
वॉट एवर वे यू आर क्रिएटिंग दी एंटायर लिस्ट इन दी सेम वे यू आर एबल टू एक्सेस इट वाई देर इंडेक्सेज एज वेल यूर एबल टू एक्सेस दो एलिमेंट्स वाई दी इंडेक्सेज एज वेल सो दो ऑर्डर रिमेन्स द सेम एंड दिस इज वाई दे आर कॉल एस ऑर्डर्ड सो यूर राइटिंग सैम फर्स्ट देन दी जीरो इंडेक्स विल बी ऑफ सैम इट सेल्फ ऑफ नथिंग एल्स वी आर राइटिंग पैम एज दी एट दी सेकेंड एलिमेंट दैट विल बी द इंडेक्स वन वुड बी फॉर पैम इट सेल्फ एंड नथिंग एल्स ओके सो दैट इज वॉट आई एम ट्राइंग टू मेक यू गाइज इंडस्टैंड Now, as you are having zero, one, two, three, four, and five, in the similar way, you are having negative indexes as well. In the similar way, you are having negative indexes as well. So, if this is zero, this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five. If you want to have minus one, then banner would be minus one. Because there is the thing that's minus zero and plus zero. Zero is zero. Okay, so I hope that you guys know that. Okay, so zero, one, two, three, four, five. So you want to have minus one. So minus one would be Banner. Minus two would be Steve. Minus three would be Austin. Minus four would be Rocky. Minus five would be Pam. Okay. Minus six would be Sam. Right over here. So you are able to access so by the indexes zero and six minus six. You are able to access Sam by the indexes one and minus five. You are able to access Pam and so on and so forth. So basically, writing students minus six. And writing students zero will give me the same answer that is Sam will give me the same answer that is Sam right over here. Okay. Next thing is there is nothing called as minus seven minus eight. There is nothing like that. There is nothing like that. There is nothing called as plus six and plus seven. There is nothing like that. It is only from zero to five and minus one to minus six. Only zero to five and minus one to minus six. Okay. So if I'm going back to my code, I'm trying to add, write students minus one, students minus two, students minus three right over here, then we are getting it from the last particular element itself, from the last element. For example, if I directly wanted to get a last element for a list, I can utilize the negative indexes to be able to do that. I don't have to do the calculation that okay, these many number of indexes are there. So if we start calculating from zero, so this will be the last index. I don't have to do that. I can directly write minus one, and I will get the last element directly. That is where, okay, that is where we are having right over here. Okay, minus one, minus two, and minus three. As you are able to see, Banner, Steve, and Austin. Those are the last three elements. Banner, Steve, and Austin, right over here. Okay, are you guys able to understand up till here? Please let me know, guys. Try to access something like twenty. Okay, if you try to access something like twenty, that does not exist. It will give you an index error, a list index out of range. Try to access something like minus twenty as well. It will give you the same error because this index does not exist. Okay, this index does not exist. So it only exists. So if there are n number of elements, you can go up till positive n minus one, and you can go up till negative n. Okay. Okay, so I will keep this session up till here itself, so that you guys are not screaming on me at the end of the day. Okay, so forms. What is today's day? Today's day two. Wait for day two right over here. Responses, accepting responses, send link, copy, copy, QR code generator right over here. QR code generator, paste, download, day two, June. You guys can scan this particular QR code to fill up your attendance link. Please use the exact same email address that you have previously used. Also, do like the video; it really helps us a lot. Okay, so please do like the video. Follow us on Instagram if it's possible. Like I said, we are trying our best to make sure that Instagram is as entertaining as possible as you guys, and also we are able to have as much type of information that we can be. 
blast to you guys as well we are able to see that most of you are not interested in like continuing right over here so i'm like it's no issues we we'll continue from tomorrow please be on time we we'll have an amazing session tomorrow we'll be completing lists we'll be starting off with tuples and dictionaries we'll be completing that in tomorrow's class okay so we'll be completing with python and then we'll be starting off in numpy and pandas okay numpy pandas not no not i don't think numpy matplotlib and cbon this is what we'll be starting after that okay so please be ready in matplotlib and cbon we'll directly be working on the on the project along with uh, learning matplotlib and cbon so we are able to understand as much as possible okay okay so thank you so much guys we'll meet tomorrow again at the same time and we'll have an awesome session okay do like the video again guys it really helps us a lot it will help you a lot as well so do like the video and thank you so much for being in the class again okay thank you so much guys thank you thank you